Hello, everyone, and welcome to Drew University. We are at Ranger Stadium getting ready for the New Jersey State Final of 2018. I am Chris McGlynn alongside Donovan Hugel. Excited for another matchup between two powerhouse programs in New yeah. Jersey. Columbia High School, the birthplace of Ultimate, against Westfield High School, three-time reigning state champion. I can't tell you how excited I am to be back here again. Third year in a row, they have moved the state final now to Thursday following Memorial Day and putting it in a stadium atmosphere. The stands are packed, everyone is filing in, and we are excited for a really good game. It's be the fourth meeting of these two teams for this season, and Westfield currently has the edge 2-1 to, to one in that category, winning twice early in the season before Columbia pulled one back in a regular season event, which we'll be talking about the new setup in just right. a little bit. Columbia pulling right now, getting ready to get underway. Donovan, what is your key to the game for Columbia to win this game? Uh, I really think that Columbia has to work on these unders. Tristan Yarder, their, uh, their best player, is out currently with a sprained LCL for two to four weeks. So if they really work the unders, it can work Westfield's uh, best offenders. I think they'll be on their way to a victory. Absolutely. Westfield starting on offense here. Dave Perry with the disc now in the middle of the field. Finding Eli Weaver. Weaver, one of the seniors on a senior heavy Westfield team. Johnny Sickles laying out to save possession. Another senior. Finding Perry up the line. Perry putting it in. That is a goal for Westfield to open up the scoring. Dave Perry scoring for Westfield is now one to nothing on the assist from Johnny Sickles. Getting ready for our second point here as Westfield is pulling Eric Polly with the pull. Now, Donovan, you mentioned before the last point that Tristan Yarder is out for today's game, will not be returning or available at any point in this one. Who needs to step up for Columbia right now to make this happen offensively? Um, I think Daniel Friedman Brown, one of the team's senior captains and headed to the University of Maryland next year, I think he's going to be a really big and key player in this game. He's uh, one of their main O-line handlers and their best handler, on uh, arguably their best handler, and with his length, and uh, and yeah, with his length, he can really get around any mark and make any throw. Look for him to take a few shots this game, or even take advantage of some uh, undercuts. Absolutely, Zach Singh with the disc now. Freeman Brown and Aylin Learn working a lot with him. Learn getting it up line, looking downfield. Thought about taking a shot and said holsters, and will continue to play small ball with Singer. Saw a little bit of a junk look from Westfield early on in the point just to slow down the Columbia offense, now settling into a person defense. Up line again, Zach Singer working it all game long here. Delkin downfield, Ben Harris laying out. Harris unable to get a hand to it, though. Excuse me, Lorenzo Deverne unable to get a hand to it. That is going to be the first turnover of the game. Westfield with its first break chance on its first defensive point. Yeah, this is big for Columbia. They need to get a deep back uh, here and score. Obviously, a tone setter early on could be something major here. Dave Perry getting yeah. isolated in the lane, sending downfield. LaRue coming underneath, unable to find him. Instead, the swing around from Paglia to Grayson Shovlin. Deep in the Columbia, deep in Westfield's end zone, though, and almost a layout there from Aylin Learn. Instead, Dave Perry getting it, finding Gerard Bryson upfield. Bryson looking upfield to Jacob LaRue. Yeah, that, uh, that Learned Perry matchup is going to be big for today's game. They've covered each other a lot early on in the year. Jesse Katz laying out in the end zone, unable to bring it in. There was a collision in kind of the short field here as we're heading towards the end zone between Katz and Laverne, and instead we end up with a wide-open Katz. Perry just missing him, and now Columbia gets the disc back. Freeman Brown centering here. Finding Singer. This handling move of Columbia has looked lethal so far. Yeah, they're, uh, they play with a lot of chemistry. Uh, Learned and Harris are really good friends. And, uh, D and Daniel's experience just uh, adds on to that. Spiegel with an odd throw there. Fitting it in after a layout attempt from, uh, from a Westfield defender. And Freeman Brown taking a shot downfield now. Looking for Spiegel. Spiegel chasing it down and just a little bit too far. A lucky Columbia possession there in the end. Freeman Brown able to slide on his knees to bring that back in. Eric Elner almost knocked it away. Instead, Westfield managed to get it on the errant Huck. Swing around out of Palia. Palia looking for Elner, unable to get to him. A great mark there from Ben Harris. Aylin Learn coming in, almost getting a piece of it. And instead, we got a Huck now looking for Jacob LaRue. LaRue downfield, catching it in stride. Looking upfield, good switch by Columbia to prevent an easy goal for Westfield. LaRue looking now, getting to a high stall count. No one really looking for him. Shovlin works his way open. Now the Westfield offense will settle down, start swinging it around. 
Fast and furious so far in this one on yeah. both sides. Lots of quick movement from the handlers and taking some shots early. Yeah, Columbia may need to chill out on those shots. Downfield now to Jacob LaRue. That is a break for Jacob LaRue. He reels it in the front of the end zone, beating Laverne. That is Westfield 2, Columbia nothing. Westfield converting on its first break point of the game. Getting back underway now. Westfield leading 2 0. These two teams know each other well and have a history of playing against each other. Columbia, obviously, being the birthplace of Ultimate. Yeah, the uh, Swords invented in 1968 at the current senior parking lot at Columbia High School, which is where every year a huge uh, annual Thanksgiving Day alumni game is, uh, is played. It's a great tournament for sure, and one that many have played in over the years. And we got a quick turnover here, short field. A little bit of a miscommunication there for Columbia. Westfield now knocking on the door, looking downfield. Jacob Sigmund wide open in the back of the end zone. No one near Sigmund, and that'll be a goal for Westfield. Westfield looking in control early on. Columbia unsure how to respond. 3-0 for the Blue Devils. Oh, Westfield early on in this one. They're leading 3 to nothing so far, but... Definitely not something you could rule out. Last time these two teams met in the state finals was 2016. Westfield coming out victorious. Columbia, though, held a very early lead in that one, and Westfield ended up making a comeback, so I will not rule out Columbia coming back in this one by any means. They are a very deep and talented team, obviously missing one of their top players in Tristan Yarder, but even without Yarder, Donovan, you've mentioned it before, they got to work these unders. We've seen some deep shots float a little bit too far so far. We'll have to see how they adjust. Yeah, if they work these unders and just take their shots after they work under after under after under, they can really punch Westfield in the mouth and get back in this game. Absolutely. Dan Freeman Brown right now in the middle of the field with the disc. Aylin Learn initiating from there. Great a Brown break throw right away. Harris going deep and now coming underneath. Learn and finding him. Another inside throw here, finding Lyle Berkeley downfield. Berkeley centering it back to Dan Freeman Brown once again. Freeman Brown, as you mentioned before the game, just so lanky. He's got a lot of length there. It allows him to break the mark around pretty easily. We've seen that kind of at will so far in these first couple of throws. Yeah, he's really taking control of the disc on the goal line. He's going every other. He's just working it around now. Finds Spiegel now probably about 10 yards out, looking to try and convert here. Inside throw to Learned. Not in the end zone, though. Observer calling him out of the end zone. Learned looking to reset now. Find Spiegel. Right back up field though from Spiegel to Learned. That is a goal for Columbia. Columbia on the board now. Spiegel to Learned, three to one, and Columbia right back in it. This game is far from over. Quick O point there for Columbia as they punch it in. Learned scoring on the upline strike. And now it's been a little bit windy so far. Not much, about 10 miles an hour, gusting a little bit stronger than that, but just enough to affect some of these hucks early on in this game. And that time we finally saw Columbia settle down a little bit and start working the game short, looking at a lot of those inside backhand throws. And uh, overall, Columbia looked a lot more comfortable in that point. We see a junk look now from Columbia downfield, trying to shut down a Westfield pull play. Perry looking upfield to LaRue. Two of them players. Jack Chaffee taking off deep. Camacho putting it to him. Chaffee laying out into the end zone. That is a goal for Westfield. Jack Chaffee, the sophomore, reeling it in. And that is going to be another Westfield goal. They lead 4-1. to one. After a little bit of a slow start to that point, Westfield working it patiently and then eventually finding a deep shot to Jack Chaffee. Chaffee, one of a number of players actually playing in this game who was at the Junior Worlds tryouts earlier this year. He is just a sophomore, and he and his teammate Eli Weaver both in attendance on the Westfield side. For Columbia, Tristan Yarder, obviously we've talked about, was not in that, is not playing tonight, but was at that tryout. There is a lot of really top-end youth talent playing in this game on both sides of the disc. Yeah, a bunch of these kids have played devil together too, so it's a it's a pretty it's a kind of a friendly fire matchup as well. But uh, these two teams are not going to be friendly this game. They definitely want this game. They know each other well, as you just mentioned. Del devil being Delaware Valley Youth League, they go and compete at YCCs every year, both in the U17 and U20 divisions. A number of these players were on several of those teams going back here. We have just overall between these two teams. 
The majority of them have played. From Columbia, 12 out of the 22 people on the roster for CHS played at YCCs or will play this year. And then for Westfield, that actually that number is actually 16 out of 21. So both these teams have had youth nationals level of experience already. They're both very talented. As Learned, one of those YCC standouts, unfortunately throws it away looking for Freeman Brown along the sidelines. An errant throw there, very uncharacteristic of Learned. Shovlin upfield to Sigmund right away. Chaffee being double teamed. Camacho wide open in the middle of the field. Learned now picks him up. Shovlin working it short, finding Sigmund again. Back to Shovlin. Finding Luke Berry, one of the freshmen on this Westfield team. Westfield being very senior heavy, but with a couple of young standouts who are going to get significant playing time throughout. Yeah, versus Columbia, who's only got one freshman, uh, Jordan Bacharach, who is also who was also on Devils' team last year and should be playing again. Columbia only has two sophomores as well. This entire team is pretty much juniors and seniors. Very veteran group. As another freshman now, Matt Cohen gets the disc for Westfield along the sideline. Finds Matt Paglialunga. I believe that's Mike Paglialunga, excuse me. Jack Fioffi now calling a timeout. The first for Westfield. Columbia already taking one themselves. So each team going through a timeout now. Westfield knocking on the door of yet another break, leading 4-1 to right now. Coming out of the timeout now, Jack Chaffee standing over the disc as Columbia sets up on defense. Freeman Brown marking up with Grayson Shoveling. This coming in on stall four right here. Instructional observer James Kalinski calling out to the players what is expected of them right now. Tipped by Dan Freeman Brown. Chaffee reeling it in though. Finding Josh Camacho has to race outside of the end zone to bring that in. Luke Berry now on the far side of the field with the disc. A little bit of confusion in the handler space for Westfield as they start to sort it out. Chaffee shaking Spiegel to the ground. Chaffee, like we talked about before, we saw on the last point, tons of athleticism. A lot of skill as well as he goes into the end zone and brings it in for the Westfield goal. That is two in a row for Jack Chaffee. The sophomore makes it 5-1 to one for Westfield. Westfield leading 5-1 to one now. Johnny Sickles holding the disc, getting ready to pull. Sickles, another one of the seniors on this Westfield team. He'll be heading to the University of Vermont next fall. And uh, Ryan Bellin noting before this game, it's going to be a little bit odd next year. There are two older Sickles siblings. Billy Sickles, the standout on patrol and former MVP of the a, uh, excuse me of the MLU, which is now defunct, and his older sister Emily, who actually just graduated from the University of Vermont. Both of those players ended up going through the Westfield program, and Bellin noted that it was the it'll be next year the first time since 2009 that there will not be a Sickles sibling playing in Westfield. Definitely a odd adjustment for Westfield for sure. Yeah, there's a few Frisbee families with these uh, between these two teams. There's uh, the Chincadas, who are obviously all graduated now from Columbia. You have the, um, the Sickles. And then there's Andrew Cohen, too, from Westfield, who has... His younger brother, Matt, is actually playing with him tonight in this game. And their youngest brother is playing in the elementary school program in Westfield right now. Massive layout from Dave Perry, unable to get to it. And an uncharacteristic drop from Ben Harris downfield. That is a killer for Columbia. This Columbia team, as talented as they are, has looked out of sorts early on in this game. Yeah, they're really going to have to dig deep here with their top end talent. They may have to cut the playing time for some people here. Weaver along the sidelines bringing it in. He has the matchup right now with Harris. Finding Lucas Adrians underneath. First time we've said his name tonight. He's rocking an Elon hat. That is where he will be going in the fall as he is yet another senior on this Westfield team. And Andrew Cohen, number one on Westfield. We were just talking about him. He and his brother both playing on this Westfield team. Dave Perry upfield. He'll be going to Auburn next year. Yeah, Columbia messed up the mark here. They were at backhand, really supposed to be at flick. Switching it back now. Great cut from Eli Weaver. Front of the end zone. He's not in, though. James Glinski singling him out of the end zone. Weaver resetting now on the goal line. Looking for his reset. Finds Matt Pendilly. Pendilly flips it upfield. Weaver going up. And Weaver reels it in. The senior headed to Michigan next year. Makes it 6-1 Westfield. Westfield leading 6-1 now as they're coming out on defense yet again. The fourth meeting of these two teams, as we noted earlier on, Westfield taking the first two before Columbia got one back in a 
what was an NJ regular season matchup. There is a big change this year to how the New Jersey high school ultimate scene is being run. They instituted a new setup with a minimum number of games in state to be eligible for postseason play, meaning that at the state championships, it was required to have a certain number of games in, and you had to be in the top 12 in a weekly release standings. So a really big shift from when you and I used to play in this game, Donovan. It was really interesting to see, and I think really good for the development of some of the teams that are not quite in ready to be knocking on the door of these state championships just yet. Yeah, all of Ultimate's kind of changed into a standings type of format. Obviously, we have the Ulti World Top 25 rankings for high school teams. Um, college teams now pay more attention to the top 100 rankings, see where they rank, see what tournaments they can get into and play, and uh, we now see it in New Jersey. A drop there from Lyle Berkeley along the sidelines. Columbia with his second straight possession ending in a drop. Jesse Katz picking up now. Great dump defense, though, from Columbia, denying the disc over and over again. High stall count and a layout there from Zach Singer. Singer getting it back for Columbia. CHS showing they still have fight left in them. Yeah, that was a huge, huge D. Ari Brown with the great dump defense, and then Singer came in with the big layout D. That might just be what Columbia needs here. Ari Brown, part of this junior core on Columbia. There are a number of Columbia juniors showing that this team is going to be back next year and ready to roll once again. Tight window to throw into there. Gerard Bryson marking Zach Singer closely. The round swing and another layout from Columbia. Jacob Hoover. That time we had Jacob Hoovler bringing it in. Hoovler, another junior on this Columbia team. Learn it now on the sidelines. Running out of time. Finds Singer though. Columbia struggling to get off the sideline. Now finally swinging it around to Learn it, but unable to swing it all the way. Westfield doing a jo good job of sealing the disc and keeping it on this backhand side of the field. Spiegel looking upfield. Again, finding Brown. Brown, Ari Brown downfield. Tight window again. Singer working at pretty much every other, dominating this possession for Columbia. Nice around throw right there from Zach. And yet no one cutting the break side. Spiegel laying out, unable to bring it in. Just overthrown from Learned. Palia now picking it up with Brown on him. Brown really working hard on this point. Defensively, he is not giving Palia anything. His mark there, incredible, forcing the throw up field. Perry just beating Eric Binder in field. Two Westfield players there. Jacob LaRue coming up with it in the end, looking downfield for Bryson. Does not throw it. Elner with the disc now. Westfield falling into the same trap as Columbia, stuck along the sidelines, unable to get it off. Brown laying out, unable to get a hand to it though. Finally the around now from Elner to Katz. Katz in the middle of the field, about 15 yards away. Both teams getting in close and Spiegel just stepping in front of LaRue. Neither team able to convert to the red zone so far. Learning with the disc now along the sidelines once again. Taking a shot downfield. Wide open is Lyle Berkeley. Berkeley reeling it in, easily beating Jesse Katz. Columbia gets their second goal of the night. And we got a cartwheel there from Lyle Berkeley. That was huge for Columbia. That's what they did. They really worked that under, and then they took the big shot deep to Berkeley. Columbia, that was huge. Columbia is certainly game. at their best when they are taking deep shots and converting. First one converted for Columbia, and this one is now 6-2. to two. Westfield still leading. 6-2 now. Columbia getting back on the scoreboard and halting the Westfield run. And the crowd here letting them know it is far from over. We have a number of members of the Sparkle Motion, Columbia's girls team here in attendance as well. Several parents and alumni always showing up. This game in its third year of existence, as we talked about earlier, and the turnout is just as good as it has ever been. This really is the future of High School Ultimate. I've said it since day one for, this pro, uh, for these two programs. You have two of the top programs playing in a state final now under the lights at Drew University, and you end up rightly with 300 people turning out to come watch a game. I'll be honest, that's better than a lot of AUDL franchises do. Yeah, it really is the future of high school ultimate, and it's they're I think they're really converting to another type of sports format. You have football with the Friday night lights, lacrosse under the lights too, soccer. It's really trying to appeal to other big time sports in America and get to that point. Westfield working the disc now. Shovlin swinging around to Eli Weaver. Yeah, Columbia really working hard on defense here. 
Poaching the lane, making it difficult for Westfield to find anything downfield. Jack Chaffee with the disc. Luke Barry with a little shimmy up line. Beats his man. Puts it downfield. Johnny Sickles beating the layout defender. Zach Singer got a few on the last point. Unable to get one on this one. And that is going to be another goal for Westfield. 7-2. Just a point away from half now for Westfield. Welcome back to Drew University. We are here at Ranger Field getting ready for the second half of play. Game is at 13, so we're a little bit off. It is actually going to be half at 7. Westfield getting ready to pull now. These two coaches had a chance, two sets of coaches had a chance to talk to their players at halftime. I can imagine the, the message for Westfield right now has to be don't let up. And the message for Columbia has to be similar, and we're going to get right back into this. Yeah, I talked to Yarder during halftime. He said that uh, they talked about they're playing faster than they should be, and they're just rushing their throws. As we saw, they had a few uh, unwarranted turnovers near the sideline and on their own end zone. On the Columbia side, too, it's an interesting group. Uh, a little bit of a fresher, some fresher faces in that coaching staff department for Columbia. You mentioned the Chincata family earlier. Two of them roaming the sidelines tonight for Columbia. Gabby Chincata and Zach Chincata, brother and sister, helping out coaching tonight for Columbia. Yeah, Zach, a graduate of the 2015 class, the last Columbia team to win states. And Gabby was the JV coach, was not the JV coach last year, but the two years before that, she was a JV coach and led the team to back-to-back -to -back Division II state titles. Needless to say, they both have a lot of experience playing in this state tournament and coaching in this state tournament. A little bit of a different stage now, though. On the flip side, as Columbia works the disc down to the end zone, Lyle Berkeley getting wide open into the end zone. That's Berkeley's second goal of the game. That's big for CHS in the second half. Definitely a momentum boost for sure. We'll have to see how Columbia responds. They trail 7-3. That was huge. There's a lot of time left also. If you, uh, there's, there's a lot, lot, of, time. There's a lot, there's a lot of, time of time left. Columbia pulling down to start the next point, trailing 7-3. Quick offensive possession there. They worked it right up the sideline and into the end zone. Very fluid possession for Columbia. Westfield now back on offense. It's going to definitely be uh, really interesting to see how this Westfield coaching staff prepares their team for the second half. A very experienced coaching staff as opposed to what Columbia has so far. You have Ryan Boleen, the longtime coach of Westfield. He's been here since the reincarnation of Westfield Ultimate back in 2007. He's now won three state championships three of the last four years. He was in the state finals as well back in that 2015 season that Columbia beat Westfield in the final. Eric Palio with a nice layout grab there to save possession. And of course, working alongside him is Anthony Nunez, who knows both sides of this rivalry very, very well. Nunez being the coach at Columbia from the early 2000s, and a graduate from Columbia High School as well, was at Columbia High School as the coach from the early 2000s all the way until 2011, won 11 state championships in a row with Columbia before finally stepping down, taking a couple of years away from high school ultimate, and now has worked his way onto the other side of the rivalry and has won two straight state titles now. So he's got 13 in total. Needless to say, he's uh, familiar with being in this state championship game. Right. And it's interesting to note, too, that when Nunez was the Columbia coach and won 11 straight, and when CHS won 13 straight state titles, uh, the state uh, tournament for New Jersey was not that competitive. Westfield was just reincarnated in 2007, and Columbia really didn't have that much, that many rivals to deal with on their own end. So when Westfield uh, got more competitive, and as North got better in South and Wachung, the state has become a lot more competitive, as we have seen. Uh, even though Westfield and Columbia have won every state title dating back to 2000, last year Columbia was not in the state title, it was Wachung versus Westfield. And Wachung being one of just three teams you mentioned, West Windsor North and actually Princeton High School. They're the only other three programs to make the state final even since the year of 2000. These two teams have dominated the New Jersey High School Ultimate. Really, I mean, Westfield's new to the picture. Columbia dominated unchecked for a very long time, as you just mentioned there. But now these two teams kind of going back and forth at the top of the New Jersey. A very long O point here for Westfield. Yeah, Columbia's really making them work on their own offensive end near their end zone, but Westfield's just uh, doing the same thing back by working CHS's cub. As you can see, they were very, they were a lot more tighter at the start of the point, and now they're a lot looser. Ari Brown, number 12, is walking towards his man and then jogging, uh, jogging slower than usual. Definitely. Westfield made it up to about half field, ended up getting pushed back. Jack Chaffee finding a little throw through the middle of that cup now. 
Down to Jacob LaRue. Dave Perry up to a excuse me, up to Eric Elner. Back to Chaffee. Westfield continuing to stay patient here. It's a nice break throw by Chaffee right there to get it to the break side. There's not much wind. We mentioned it a little bit earlier on in this game. Not enough to make a huge impact. Shot down field from Jake, uh, Jesse Katz to Jake LaRue. LaRue reeling it in just outside the goal line. No one there from now, and he finds Bryson cutting to the front cone. That'll be another goal for Westfield. They get their first offensive hole of the half. Eight to three now. The Blue Devils still lead it in this one. Westfield pulling to start this next point here. Jack Chaffee with the disc. Rubbing it downfield. It's almost a little bit foggy here tonight at Drew University in Madison, New Jersey. Yeah, rain was supposed to be in the forecast, but we haven't seen it at all at this point. Hopefully we don't get rain. Very humid so far, but no rain to speak of yet. Dan Freeman Brown uncorking a deep shot downfield. Looking for Aylin Learned. Jack Chaffee just peeling off, knowing he had no shot. Learning coasting into the end zone. That is a goal for Columbia. Quick strike for CHS. That was big right there. That was a deep shot that they really needed. Freeman Brown and Learned. Those two are really key to this team and are going to be key if Columbia wants to come back. Columbia High School getting ready to pull right now, trailing eight to four. They've looked sharp on offense in the second half so far. Patient and willing to take their shots when they get them. Yeah, and there's a lot of time left on the clock. We're about, uh, we're at about 49 minutes left in this game and Columbia's only down by four. Uh, they can really get back in this game if they get a few Ds and get a, just get a few breaks overall. We saw Westfield going a bit of a run in that first half. Columbia very capable of doing exactly the same thing. So this game is far from out of reach so far. Columbia with another uh, junk look right here. They're neither going to have it tighter than the last, last time they ran on D. Impressive. Something to note here if you're a young high school player looking to get better. Johnny Sickles using his fakes to move the zone very effectively here so far on this point. Matt Pendilly finding Matt Feinberg. First time we're saying his name tonight. Murph, one of the seniors, as he's called by his teammates on this Westfield team. And we've got a little bit of an odd jump just situation here. Spiegel and Weaver debating over who had it first. Going to be sent back in the end. One of the staples we've seen so far of this rivalry is the intensity never gets in the way of spirit. These two teams always manage to respectfully come to a decision, come to a conclusion that everyone get along with. The crowd may not agree. Yeah, a lot of the uh, a lot of the Columbia and Westfield kids, as we mentioned earlier, have played together on Devil. So there are they are friendly with each other, but the crowd is really getting into it now, booing the last Westfield player, Eli Weaver, on that call. Definitely a little bit tough there. A little like a little bit of a joint possession situation. Downfield again to Weaver. Weaver going up and getting it. Two Columbia players in the area. On the goal line now, calling a timeout. Dave Perry cannot believe his teammate didn't just throw it to him. Instead, Eli Weaver will come back with the disc on the goal line just a few yards out. Yeah, Weaver and Perry with that very, very, very interesting relationship. They're best friends, so uh, Perry's probably licking his chops at that one. Absolutely. Those two, they get along really well on the field, and they definitely clash. They're definitely big personalities. Two senior leaders on this team, Perry heading to Auburn next year and Weaver heading to Michigan. But those two put everything aside, and they come together on the field, much as some of these top Columbia players do as well. And they make it all work on the Frisbee field, that's for sure. Westville taking their first time out of the half there. Getting set. The offense is set now. Columbia setting up on defense. Bit of an interesting look here. Lucas Adrian's right at the front cone for Westfield right here. Not giving him a whole lot of space to work. We'll have to see what uh, Coach Ryan Molina has drawn up right here. Columbia with a late switch on the play, too. Aylin learning on the mark. Brian Taylor getting beat up line. Dave Perry into the end zone. So he doesn't get it before the timeout. Instead, he gets it after the timeout. Perry just coasting into the end zone. 9-4 Westfield. Columbia getting set to receive here as we're getting back underway. 9-4 Westfield leading. It's been a really back and forth second half so far. Both teams holding on offense and very clean. No turnovers yet. Now this game is still far from over, but Columbia, if they're going to go on a run, it has to do it soon. Westfield just four points away from putting this game to bed. Lots of time left, but game is being played to 13, so... 
Columbia going to have to make a move very soon. Yeah, Columbia's still going to work those unders, but they're probably going to have to take some deep shots that they didn't want to take earlier in the game. Be a little riskier here just to get back into this one. Dan Freeman, Brad working up underneath. And the kid going to Maryland, takes a shot downfield, looking for Learned again. Learned in chase, grabs it, and he's in the end zone. That is another goal for Columbia. Freeman Brown fighting Learned downfield once again. Yeah, it's the second time they've connected oh, today. It's going to be coming back, though. A travel call on the mark. Johnny Sickles calling Dan Freeman Brown on the travel. That one will be coming back. I just mentioned Freeman Brown will be going to Maryland next year, a senior on this Columbia team, and he will not be alone. He actually will be taking one of his high school teammates with him, Jacob Sheedy, another senior, number two for Columbia, also attending University of Maryland. Now that program just went to nationals this year, obviously took a bit of a roundabout way to get there, winning five straight elimination games to do so, but they're getting two nice additions there from Columbia High School. Yeah, Daryl Stanley, one of the most underrated college coaches in the country. He's getting a really, he's getting a top New Jersey State handler. I'm sure he'll be able to put him to good use here as the game resets now. Freeman Brown bobbling it just enough for Sickles to pick it up. Sickles in trouble. Finally finds Eric Elner. Westfield's offense coming to a complete and total stop here. Great defense from Columbia so far. Singer yeah, almost pulling the trigger, living his feet. A late under right there, but that's expected to happen when the stall count gets higher. Players on defense get tired. Difficult to guard for 10 straight seconds, that is for sure. Inside break there from Palia. Elner looking downfield, just throwing it out of reach of Johnny Sickles. Elner had the break throw and just rushed the execution a little bit. Clock's Very good decision, but... Yeah, clock's ticking here for Columbia. They're going to have to pick it up and do something. Learn it picking up again, initiating the offense one more time for Columbia here. In trouble here, he finds Laverne in the middle of the field. Inside break to Spiegel. Spiegel taking a really wide looping shot downfield. Group piling up and Laverne goes up and gets it. And tosses it in the end zone, Dan Freeman Brown brings it in. Yeah, that the senior tracking it down in the front of the end zone. That was huge. He hit that huge uh, back end hook to learn it earlier in the point. Got called back on the travel. But Columbia was able to get the D on Westfield zone end and worked it up the field quick. Deverne with the big grab too on the end zone line. Grinding it out, Columbia definitely is at this point. They trail 9-5. to five, Looking to make a comeback. Crowd getting into it again as the Columbia players come off the field trying to pump up those on the sidelines and those cheering them on in the fan section. They're getting ready here, trailing 9-5. to five. Really just impressive point there from Columbia's offense. Tough to get the travel call and to bring back what was a goal-scoring huck. And then you have the quick turnover right after on the bobble from Freeman Brown. Instead, Columbia grinds it out, gets it back, comes up with a bit of a 50-50 shot, and then finds their senior handler in the front of the end zone for the goal. Yeah, he's a big player for this team. Uh, he really needed to get over that, and he did quickly, and that was, uh, that was really perfect for that team. They looked to him to be a leader on and off the field. Learning with the rip down field on the pole. Luke Berry fielding for Westfield. We're getting into the later stages of this one now. Grayson shoveling with the disc. Columbia running another junk look here, trying to shut down this Westfield pole play. Yeah, their cup's got to be tighter. Again, uh, Westfield really chiseled that disc, and then once the cup got tighter, they hit the uh, they hit the through shots, and Columbia's going to have to push here and Some play tight. Some of the breeze we felt in the first half as well is kind of faded. There's not really as much wind in this second half for sure, giving Westfield all the opportunity they need to take one of those shots downfield. Two years ago, we saw it plenty. Cole Feltman was the notorious one, taking shots over the top of the Columbia zone for Westfield. He did it time and time again and found a lot of success doing so. Not enough wind to dis disrupt those throws downfield. No one from Westfield willing to do so so far. Any of the blades we've seen have been sideways or backfield. It's Columbia mark, defense though. holding strong. Yeah, they're going to need to keep this up this whole point. Intensity certainly there from Columbia. They do not want to give up anything downfield. Westfield oh. stuck swinging it back and forth. Berkeley with a bid, unable to get it from Chaffee. Brian Taylor really active in the middle of that cup. He's Stopping doing a lot right shots. now. Making it difficult for Westfield to find anything downfield. One of the two sophomores on this team as well. 
Now, you mentioned to me earlier, he's got a dancing background. We're actually seeing a little bit of that with his footwork. It's really strong in the middle of that cup, necessary to ensure that there's not too many holes opening up. Yeah, he's a very quick player. He's vital to this middle of the cup here. That dancing background has a lot to do with it as well, as you said. Barry with the disc now back in the middle of the field. Westfield starting to chip up the field now. Finally starting to gain some yards in this Columbia zone. Shafi flipping over the top, finding Shovel and two sophomores connecting on that one there. Those two good friends off the field. I know we've talked about some of the friendships on both sides. Shovelin and Shafi. Very close off the field and learning how to take advantage of a defense together. Luke Barry going right through his hands there. Unexpe not expecting that little dish pass from Jacob Sigmund. The Columbia zone doing exactly what it needed to do, forcing a lot of throws and eventually a Westfield mistake. Learn it picking up now. First break opportunity for Columbia of the half. Ben yep. Harris now looking upfield. Columbia slowing down the offense too. Learn it's really trying to take control here. Instead, we go over the top now on the swing to Binder. Matt Cohn putting the wrong force on. A couple of breaks up the side here. Camacho getting it back now. He's matched up with Harris. Columbia knocking on the door. They need this break. Spiegel working hard underneath, looking downfield, finding Harris in the front of the end zone. That is a goal for Columbia, making it a break. Yeah, first break of the game. That is ginormous for them. They're really back into it now. Their crowd is cheering hard for them. And uh, we see 9-6, still a decent amount of time left for, the, uh, for Columbia to get back into this game. So only Columbia. they are back into this game. They only trail by three. This game is far from over. Westfield looking for answers right now on offense. Columbia trailing 9-6 here. They are re looking to get right back into it. They are just down by three right now. A couple more breaks. We're going to start a run here. And uh, we've seen a lot of some, I guess, Pittsburgh-esque traditions on this Columbia side. They've uh, pulled in some of their cheers, some of the monikers they've dubbed themselves, as well as their warm-up routine. Uh, a little bit surprising considering the fact that not in the same state, but I guess we shouldn't be too surprised when you consider the fact that there's a lot of Devil and just New Jersey alumni playing uh, for Pittsburgh right now and have been for the last several years. Oh. And a quick turnover here from Dave Perry. A drop as Columbia gets it back. They have an opportunity for a second straight break here as Freeman Brown walks to the disc to pick up. The break around. Weaver gets a piece. But we, Zach Singer still zigs it out. And DFB really, uh, Freeman Brown really used his length there. I think we need a foul call there. Perry laying out, but making some contact with Learned's feet. And that's going to be an uncontested foul. Disc will be going to Learned there. Don't even need to go to... Well, the observers, actually, let's know here, are not making active calls. They're just here for instructional purposes. They'll make active calls regarding in and out of the end zone and offsides. Those are the only calls we're making tonight. Single with the disc on the sideline now. Learned it dancing in the handler space. Singer can't find anyone, takes a shot downfield. Perry elevating, can't get to it. Learned it in the back of the end zone and he drags his foot and he is in. That is gonna be another goal for Columbia. 9-7 now, CHS trailing. And just like that, the red and black are coming back. Columbia back in and now 9-7, they trail. It is a very close contest as we enter the final half hour of time in this New Jersey High School State Final. Tristan Yarder still walking around the sidelines talking to Coach Gabby Chincata, figuring out the game plan to complete this comeback. Columbia now with two straight breaks and looking to make it a third one here. This Westfield offensive unit has to find a way to settle down and avoid quick turnovers. Shorter pull here from Columbia. Another, another Jack Chaffee challenge. going right through his legs. Westfield needs to regain some focus right now. They look a little bit out of sync on offense. Another zone look from Columbia. These zones have not done a whole lot in generating turnovers in the form of blocks for Columbia, but done a lot in terms of forcing Westfield to take a number of short throws, increasing the likelihood that one of these guys is going to drop it or throw it away. We've seen that a number of times in the last few points for Westfield. They're moving it really quick here. Good offensive movement from Westfield so far. A lefty throw here from Dave Perry back to Jack Chaffee. Westfield, though, wanting to work it short. They've not taken any over-the-top shots to this point in this zone. 
And as I say that, of course, they take one incomplete from Johnny Sickles looking for Josh Camacho. That's what this zone is looking for. Us. It's challenging some tougher throws downfield. Eric Binder picking up now. Dave Perry locking up on the dump space. Laying out and knocking it away. Dave Perry getting it right back. He's really trying to get his confidence back after that last point with a drop and a miss D. That was big for his confidence. Dave, Barry, uh, Dave Perry, I describe him sometimes as a sleeping bear. If you wake him up, it's scary for the other team. Eli Weaver now on the goal line, looking for Sickles. Lots of cuts. Lucas Adrian's in the middle of the field. I believe we have a pick call, though, and this is going to be coming back. Adrian's getting a little bit open too easily there. Weaver will have the disc again. Just outside the end zone. This is a huge moment here for both teams. Westfield needs to punch it in. Ari Brown playing really good defense on that uh, sleeping bear, David Perry. Physicality certainly there. And Eli Weaver celebrating even though he's ruled out of the end zone. Tapping it back in now. Getting some jeers from the Columbia fan section. And instead finds his senior teammate Josh Camacho for the goal. 10-7 Westfield finally punches one in on offense. Columbia has to take some hurt though. They force a turn. And they know this game is far from over. 10-7 Westfield leading. Columbia back on offense. The Westfield crowd's getting it back into it after another score for the Blue Devils. They are up 10-7 right now in the New Jersey State Final. This game's far from over, and just when it looked like Westfield were starting to pull away, Columbia making it interesting, pulling it back to just two. And now it's three points once again. Westfield pulling here down to the Columbia O-line. Dan Freeman Brown back on the field. We've seen him take a number of shots in the last couple of points, completing all of them. After Columbia unable to really find any success early on, Columbia has been almost perfect so far. And Freeman Brown taking off right now on his own. Learned it, taking a shot downfield. Inside backhand, just out of the reach of Freeman Brown. The senior unable to reel it in. Learn it, not putting enough float on it there. Freeman Brown had a step or two on Eli Weaver. Had it been just a little bit floatier, I think he would have been able to reel that one in. Yeah, we got a few big matchups here, too. We have Freeman Brown on Weaver and uh, Harris on Jacob LaRue. Jacob LaRue has been good uh, cutting deep and cutting under for Westfield in this game, so Harris is going to have to do a lot of work to lock him up. Layout attempt there from Columbia. Lyle Berkeley going for it. Another matchup to note here is you have Aylin Learned matched up with Jack Chaffee, junior and senior. These two know each other well, playing on Devil U17. And I'm sure we'll be playing for several years in the future on Devil U20 together. Gerard Bryson able to bring it in. It's going to be a turnover here for Westfield. Columbia getting it back for their O-line. Where are they going to pick up the disc with Chaffee on the mark? And Weaver matching up with Friedman Brown in the handler space. Quick cut here from Singer. Inside look. Inside he finds Ben Harris on the goal line. Harris not with too many options in the end zone. Resets to learn it. Learn it breaks around, finds Harris, and that is a hold for Columbia. 10-8 now for CHS. We've talked about relationships within the team, and, and Ben and Aylin are a big one with that chemistry and with that big friendship that those two have. Great breakthrough there from Learn it as he finds Harris on the far side of the end zone, making another one. Not exactly a clean hold, but a hold nonetheless for Columbia. Down by just two. The crowd here getting pumped up once again. Not quite rivaling probably what you'll see at USA Ultimates College Nationals, but a good one nonetheless. That national championship game taking place just this past Monday, Memorial Day. And as we mentioned before, a number of Devil alumni playing in that game. You had on the Pittsburgh side, Ryan Moore, Kevin Trey, and Andrew Lemberg. Lemberg unfortunately not suiting up due to injury. All of them playing at Westfield High School. Harry McNamara, a freshman for Pittsburgh, playing in this state champion excuse in the state championship game two years ago with CHS, a key piece of that Columbia team. Some other alumni there, David Voidchuk on the UNC side. And then, of course, Michael Ng and Jonah Wish, two of the mainstays in that Pittsburgh offensive unit, playing for Devil in years past as well. We have Henry Ng, too, who is finishing up his senior year at Radnor High School in uh, Pennsylvania. But he's attending the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, he's attending the uh, University of Pittsburgh next year, and he just made uh, the U-20 USA team. Oh, congratulations to Henry Ng, joining his brother next year, playing at Pittsburgh 
And uh, they'll actually be joined as well by Matt Feinberg, senior on Westfield. So you got another Westfield Devil player going to play at Pittsburgh. There's been a number of them. Wouldn't be surprised if we get a few more of this group on the field going to Pittsburgh at some point in the next few years as well. Finally getting over the top shot here from Westfield as they look downfield. Luke Berry on the receiving end of that one. Grayson Shavlin on the goal line now resets to Eli Weaver. Weaver unmarked right now. Easy swing around to Jacob Sigmund. And Columbia unsure who they're supposed to be guarding right now. We finally get the defense on. Johnny Sickles catching a contested goal in the end zone. We got a call coming though. This one might be coming back. A little bit of confusion right now on the field, heading it back to Weaver's hands as they look to sort this one out. Jack Abramson standing in the middle of the field there for a couple of seconds trying to figure out who he's guarding, finally realizing that Weaver the guy with the disc was the one he was supposed to be matching up with. So it's coming back now. I can't tell if it was a pick call or not, but the play definitely involved Johnny Sickles, who was on the receiving end. Weaver will have the disc now, reset on the goal line. Westfield setting up their end zone play. Good defense by Brian Taylor there. We talked about his agility and quickness earlier, and he really used it there. Weaver looking to try and score the goal and gets undercut there by Jack Abramson. And that is going to be a turnover. Columbia getting the disc back. Westfield now having a tough time transitioning to defense. Finally picking him up. Ben Harris with the disc now. He's marked up by Grayson Shovlin. Middle of the field now, we've got... Lucian, one of the seniors on this team, Lucian Kish, Junior. Excuse me, one of the juniors on this Columbia team. First time we're saying his name tonight. Playing some meaningful minutes. Columbia looking to break here, and it's definitely the fog is rolling in right now. It's a little bit difficult to see the field from here. Definitely some different elements than what we're used to in the New Jersey High School State Finals. Call here coming back again. Looks like a stall call. Contested stall. We'll head back to the handler. Shot downfield to Ben Harris. And that's going to be a call, foul call on Grayson Shovlin there. I think Harris is claiming he came through his back. Contested foul. So once again, it'll go back into the hands of the Columbia handler. Freeman Brown in the handler space. Getting the reset now. Columbia finally resetting the stall count. Abramson beating Sigmund up line. And another call happening here. Starting to get a little bit chippy now between these two teams. And of course, the crowd handling this as you would expect them to. With the number of boos smattering through. It's a typical Columbia High School crowd right there. <laughs> these guys, we've talked about a number of times throughout this game, know each other well, though. They resolve all these situations easily. All of them having played together, most of them having played together at YCC's on Devil. Flipped up into the end zone, that is a break for Columbia! And we have another call here on the Westfield side. Luke Berry arguing the call. I can't tell if it's a push off or is he calling him out of bounds. I believe they're calling him out of bounds. Lucian Kish arguing his case, stating that he's in bounds. There are a number of Columbia fans who are not having it right now, that is to say the least. Eli Weaver coming in to facilitate the conversation. He's really animated about this too. It's getting sent back to the goal line once again. Back in the hands of Abramson. This has certainly been a controversial point on both sides. You got a contested stall call, contested foul call, contested in and out of bounds call. A pick call that affected a goal, a Westfield goal earlier. But a lot going on here. We'll have to see who ends up grinding this one out. Freeman Brown now back in the handler space with the disc in the center of the field. Gets the reset to Abramson. Upfield now. Now Camacho calling Brian Taylor out of bounds. 
And I'm actually not sure about that one. I, I, I actually thought Kish was in the first time. It's hard to tell from here. We're very far away. Uh, upon Taylor's initial landing, though, it did look like he was out of bounds. Again, we are probably about... 60 yards away from the action right yeah. now. Makes it a little bit tough to be the uh, the on-field observer at this moment. Players once again resolving this. Getting some instructions from their observers down there on the field. Long dispute here between these two teams as they try and work this one out. Looks like, yeah, Desi's coming, Desi's coming back to Jack Abramson. I feel like every time it's come back to Jack Abramson, Jack Abramson's like, can I just complete a throw and get rid of it? <laughs> Please. Instead, Abramson, about 10 yards out of the end zone, will have the disc again. Sigmund on the mark. Freeman Brown in the handler space. Poached downfield from Westfield. Harris open in the front of the end zone for a minute there. Columbia unable to find him. Freeman Brown with the disc now, once again on the front cone. Upfield to Abramson, into the end zone, and that is finally a Columbia goal. That is now a break for Columbia, 10-9. Hard fought and very energetic. Columbia High School earns another one, and just like that, it's a one-point game. Westfield was leading in this one 9-5, and suddenly it is 10-9. We kept saying that this game was far from over, and finally Columbia made sure that it was far from over. They made the comeback. Westfield still leading here by just a point. Receiving this one. Looking to get back on track. Lots of energy from both sides. Aylin Learned ripping it downfield for Columbia. Johnny Sickles coming underneath to receive it. Centering to Jack Chaffee. Another zone look from Columbia. These zones have been effective the last couple of points. Westfield able to chip away at it and gain some yards, but able to find a whole lot of success once they break through the middle of the zone. Columbia may have to force a turn here if they're going to keep throwing the zone. Westfield is too fundamentally sound to just keep dropping the disc and throwing it away. And that's, I'm sure, the message that Ryan Bellin and Anthony Nunez are giving to their team right now. Trying to tell Westfield, just calm down. You guys have this. All you need to do is continue to work it. Spiegel going to the back of Sickles. Sickles toughing it out, though. Hanging on to the disc. Finding Dave Perry on the sideline now. Perry with another lefty. Finding Eli Weaver. Weaver staring downfield. Finds Jack Chaffee. Weaver upfield. Layout D from Aylin Learned. Columbia with another turnover forced here. He's really stepping up this game. He's really... He's throwing deep, he's going deep, he's scoring, he's getting layout these, he's doing really well for Columbia. You pointed out to us before the game, two players for Columbia that had to step up in this game because Tristan Yarder was out. One was Dan Friedman Brown, who we've seen been spectacular at points tonight. The other, Aylan Learned. He coming up in a big way there. A little bit of a call here, I think Weaver disputing where Learned brought the disc into the play, field of play. Biner taking off deep and Learned putting it up. 50-50 shot here. Lucas Adrian's in the area. Johnny Sickles as well. And three Westfield players in the end colliding before coming down with it. Polia now with the disc. Johnny Sickles ultimately with the one who brought that down. Ill-advised look there from Learned. Chaffee flipping it upfield. Layout attempt from Weaver. Polia's throw just away from him. Weaver animated coming up after that one. Frustrated now that two throws intended for him on the middle to find the mark. Binder underneath now. Binder winding up, taking a shot downfield. Blading backhand. Finds Bender in stride. Dave Perry dropping off. And we get a great cut there from Spiegel. Another break for Columbia. Tie it up now at 10. Max Spiegel from Bender. The Columbia crowd is letting them hear right now. Excited that their team has made it all the way back. Tied at 10. This one was always going to be close. Took a roundabout way to get there. We got ourselves a game, folks. We probably should have guessed this one was going to be close. The three previous matchups between these two teams, the most that either team has won by is just two points. Westfield winning 13-11 in the first matchup. Beating Columbia on universe point in the semifinals at Pensbury's Board of Dive, and then Columbia winning 15 to 13 in the New Jersey regular season matchup. Now tied at 10 in this one. Columbia putting together a spectacular second half. Trailing 7-2 at halftime. They've outscored Westfield 8-3 in the second quarter, in the second half of this one. 
Violation called here from Eli Weaver, claiming Friedman Brown left the 10-foot area that you need to be in to mark. Resetting now. Another Columbia zone, Donovan. We've seen this all over tonight. It's very effective in the second half so far. Yeah, in the game that Columbia played against uh, Center Grove at the Padilla Cup, they used their zone a lot. And Center Grove actually ended up winning that tournament, but through Columbia using that zone, they and they uh, they beat and they upset Center Grove. So knocking them off for sure. Deep shot here from Sickles, looking to Larue, and I think Ben Harris got a hand on that. I don't know if he. It might have just been footsteps. Larue might have just gotten a uh, great closeout from Harris and Larue unable to reel it in. Columbia with a chance to bring in another break here. It will be four out of the last five points. Perry undercutting it, though, getting it back for Westfield. Finding Jack Chaffee now. Now to LaRue. Now to the end zone. Lucas Adrian to the back of the end zone. Westfield fired up. They needed that one in the worst way. Westfield finally getting one back. They lead 11-10 here. This is going to be a spectacular finish. Westfield leading now 11 to 10. Finally stopped the bleeding after a extended Columbia run there. Made it back to a tied game. First time those two teams have been tied since it was 0-0. So Columbia still not having a lead at any point in this one, but making it very close. Westfield leading just two more points though to win this one. And as we've mentioned earlier, the clock is a big factor here. There's still about 12 minutes left with a game to 13 and the score being 11-10 Westfield. That's a lot of time. And based on how much some of these last few points have been going, they've been long. There's been a lot of turnovers. It hasn't been clean offense. The zones are forcing teams to slow it down and be patient. We've seen some hucks that have been incomplete. It very well could take us to the time cap before this game is officially over. Zach Singer catching and centering to Dan Freeman Brown. Westfield throwing a zone look here. And I believe that would be the first time in the three years that the state title game has been here that we've gone the full length of the time. That's correct. Since we've moved it into the Drew University Stadium here at Ranger Field. Deep shot here to Learned. Laverne. Excuse me, Laverne. Eric Elner downfield. Excuse me, Eli Weaver downfield. Bringing that one in. Laverne unable to read that one properly. Turnover there. Dave Perry downfield now. LaRue taking off deep, looking underneath, finding Sickles. Sickles faking downfield. Thought about taking the shot to LaRue instead, hanging on to it. Finding Jack Chaffee in the middle of the field. Back to Sickles, quick movement here. Johnny Sickles really using those fakes and putting them into effect. Eli Weaver to the end zone, that is a break for Westfield. And just like that, Westfield leads 12 to 10. It's not over yet, but it is game point for Westfield. Eli Weaver, the senior making sure that his team stays in front. Can they make another comeback? Can they, can they do it? I don't know. Intense finish in store here at the New Jersey State Finals. Westfield leading 12 to 10. Only needing one more point to put it away. Columbia tied it up at 10. And now Westfield scoring the last two in a row, a hold, and a break to Eli Weaver on the last point here. And regardless of the outcome of this game, it's been a fantastic game so far. West, uh, Columbia with a big comeback. It looked like early on Westfield was going to pull a similar feat to what they did last year. They blew the doors off of Wachung, came out early, never let Wachung Hills get into it, winning that game. I believe 13-5 to was the final. Wachung just never looked like they had a shot. And of course now... This second half has really been all Columbia for the most part. The question now is can they make another comeback? They got themselves all the way back to even and now they've dug themselves another hole here down by two with really not a whole lot of time or points left. They need to hold here before they can even start taking, thinking about coming out with a break on defense. Clock's ticking too, under 10 minutes now. Aylin Learned centering the disc after the out of bounds pull. Josh Camacho, the senior, will be headed to CCNJ next year matching up with him. These two crowds are getting into it too. They can sense that this game is right on the edge of being turned one way or another. Ben Harris with the big undercut there. Upfield to learn it now. Friedman Brown coming back for the swing. It's a great break throw by Learned. Singer with a nice crafty upline cut. Pick call though downfield between Berkeley and Lucas Adrians. Spiegel down there as well for Columbia. Really nice cut from Zach Singer there. 
Dan Freeman Brown looking to him and realized, recognized the pick call. Brought it back instead. Instead breaks it around with that long flick. He's got a wide reach there. Allows him to get around that mark very easily. Shaking off there on Dave Perry. Perry playing tight defense, but Freeman Brown just getting the better of him right now. Use that length again to get right over David. Inside shot here, finding Lyle Berkeley. He's had a big game for Columbia, too, with her, uh, two goals for uh, yeah, help him get back into this game. The lefty getting off the sideline, and now back to learn it on the sideline. Inside shot here to Binder. Layout from Johnny Sickles. The senior getting it back for Westfield. I think we have a foul call on the throw, though, so Sickles' effort all for naught. Josh Camacho getting called for the foul. It'll go back to Learned. No contest on the call as well. Going to be coming in on zero here. Sickles with a great layout D. Not going to count, though, for his team. It's unfortunate because you really don't want either team to lose. These teams have both battled really hard in the second half. Westfield dominating the first half. Columbia dominating the second half. One team's got to win, though, which means we've, the other team's got to go down. And we've mentioned also that they're the top two teams in the state, but we also haven't mentioned that these teams are ranked 10th and 11th in the country. Turnover there. Yes, you're correct. Ulti World ranks them 10th and 11th in the country. And Westfield is coming in at 10. Westfield coming in at 10 and Columbia coming in at 11. It's actually swap. Columbia being ranked higher in the power rankings despite having the number one seed in the state championship tournament. Ulti World waiting that final victory that Columbia had in the New Jersey game in Westfield Saver. Westfield with a chance to win the game here, win a state championship. Turnover going right through Spiegel's hands. Sickles now swinging it around to Eric Paglia, the freshman fighting Dave Perry. Perry racing downfield. Cannot bring it in. Columbia still has life. We've got a timeout call. Timeout call from Columbia. I believe that is their first of the second half. They've got 70 yards to go to get downfield. About five and a half minutes left as well. This game is going to come to a very interesting close. Columbia still alive in this one. Westfield had a chance to put the nail in the coffin and put it away. Unable to do so there as Polia just overthrows Dave Perry on that break side. Two sets of coaches head out there now to talk to their two teams. It's going to be a very interesting finish. I know we keep saying it, but we are excited to see how this one goes down. Anthony Nunez and Ryan Bellin out there for Westfield. Zach and Gabby Chincata out there with Eric Cooney, another assistant coach for this Columbia team, and another, talking over the strategy. And another, also a part of a, uh, of a big Columbia family as well. The Cooneys have about five siblings, I believe, in the CHS Ultimate family. All still involved locally as well, playing in local summer leagues, helping out with these high school programs. It's really nice to see when you get a lot of these families giving back and continue to stay involved in the community. These two teams walking back onto the field now. Tension rising, but these teams have been there before. We've talked about they've been in some state, excuse me, some national semifinals. A number of these players playing a couple years ago on the U-17 Devil team that went to the finals. And U-20 as well. U-20 semis. Playing against Triangle, against the Triangle Triforce team from North Carolina. And the final the year before versus Triforce as well. They've had a number of players playing some really high stakes games. I'm sure though if you ask any of these guys right now which game matters most, they say the one they're currently playing in. Dave Pay on the mark, Dan Freeman Brown picking it up once again for Columbia. Straight up mark here from Perry. Great Tipped, throw by Daniel. But finds Learned. Learned bombing it downfield. Looking for Biner. Biner racing down. Laying out. Unable to bring it in. Josh Camacho giving chase. 13 versus 13 on the matchup. Biner got the better of him on the downfield cut. Unable to bring it in for the goal. And I think we might have a foul call here coming all the way back to the throw from Learned. Johnny Sickles and Aylin Learned have not moved since the initial throw went off. Observer James Kalinske with his hand in the air. Charlie Cannon, the other observer on the far side here, helping sort out some of the downfield cutters.
Binder, I'm sure, happy to get another shot of that one. He was inches away from reeling that one in. Yeah, it would have been big. Instead, Laver no, excuse me, Ben Harris taking off deep and Binder coming under this time. Wide open for a big under there. Upfield the Spiegel, Weaver on him. Spiegel, one of the captains attending the University of Oregon next fall. University of Oregon, obviously with a great college program. Malcolm Richardson, another player from CHS going there a year ago. He'll be transferring to Wisconsin. Well, he'll actually be joining uh, Westfield player Andrew Cohen, one of the seniors, will be going there next year. So, number of players going to big-time college programs, competing at nationals just this past weekend. Lyle Berkeley getting the disc once again in the middle of the field. Dishing it off to his pal, Zach Singer, who finds Aylin Learn. Learning with the break. Two Columbia players there. Ben Harris sliding. And that is going to be a goal for Columbia. A hard-fought hold for CHS. Ben Harris bringing it in and making it one point once again for Columbia. For this next point, I don't even know if Columbia can go zone on here. They're going to need a quick D. Clock is about a minute and a half left in this game. Westfield at game point. Columbia is going to need a break and a hold here to win the game. So the thing here, though, is the point will start. So Columbia really just needs to get the point underway before the 130s, which should be totally fine. Assuming Columbia would score this upcoming point and Westfield wouldn't end the game, hard cap would then go into effect, which means that the game would be tied at 12 and we'd have a universe point situation on our hands. So this game is going to be certainly a lot of fun. We're coming right down to the wire in this one. 12-11 right now. Westfield still leading. Columbia punching that one in for the hold. Game is far from over. These two teams grinding it out. Number of the former players on their feet on both sides, Westfield and Columbia. And even some of the JV players, some of the team, the players, the future of these two programs on their feet right now, up against the railings. Excited to see how this one concludes. We're excited to see how this one concludes up in the booth. This one's been crazy so far. The big storylines to catch you up. Tristan Yarder from Columbia, not playing in this one. A U20 Worlds tryout earlier this year. He will have another chance to go back because he is young enough to in 2020. Westfield got out to a very early lead, 7-2. Took half on Columbia. Looked like they were going to coast to another state championship. Instead, CHS clawed back, timed the game up at 10 with an excellent second half and tied it up. Westfield played it 12-10 and is now 12-11. Downfield now, knocked away by Ben Harris. Lay an attempt from Zach Tinger, didn't get home. Ben Harris undercuts Jacob LaRue for the D. Columbia now with a chance to tie. Our hard cap horn has gone off. Spiegel ripping it downfield, looking for Brian Taylor. Lucas Adrian's giving chase and knocking it away. Disc actually went over the fence on that one. Wow, that is a first here at Drew University. We've not had that situation before. Taylor and Paglia, the matchup there. Adrian's giving help over the top. In all honesty, I don't even know if Taylor would be able to bring that one down inbounds. It was sailing a little bit on him. Max Spiegel just miscalculating that shot just a little bit. Came close to tying it up for Columbia here. Columbia with the zone again here. A zone look for Columbia. Time no longer a factor as hard cap has gone off. Eric Paglia, the freshman, taking the disc in the middle of the field, breaking it right through the middle of the cup, finding Grayson Shovlin. Jack Chavi back to Shovlin. Westfield can take their time here, too. They can work the disc. They can chisel it upfield. Chavi over the top to Paglia. Now to Shovlin. Very young core handling the disc right now. Brian Bellin and Anthony Nunez putting a lot of faith in some of their young players. Jack Chaffee and Grayson Shavlin, sophomores, Eric Paglia, a freshman. Johnny Sickles anchoring it on the break side as well. He's a senior. Johnny Sickles and Josh Camacho. Jingle LaRue take it off deep. Ben Harris in the area giving chase. Easily knocking that one away. Harris with his second D of the point. Ensuring the game continues and ensuring that Columbia still has a chance to tie here. These two teams have been meeting for years now. Notable alumni clashing over the course of the last several years. 
on the Columbia side, some big names on the ultimate on the ultimate field, and of course some that are probably bigger off the ultimate field, namely being MKBHG, Marquez Brownlee, the famous YouTube sensation, plays for the New York Empire in the AUDL, a Columbia grad, Tim Morrissey, a national champion in college with Colorado Mamba Board, and of course on the club division with Denver Johnny Bravo, junior national team back in 2010. And Evan Padgett, a national champion with Johnny Bravo as well. These two teams have a number of famed alumni. Deep shot downfield now looking to Spiegel. Chaffee going on up, able to get it. Spiegel dishing it off, laying out, and Brown unable to bring it in. Grayson Shovelin just putting enough defensive pressure on to knock it away. Paglia finding Sickles now with the disc. Columbia settling into a person defense once again. Shafi with the disc on the sideline. Some more Westfield alumni. As Sickles lays out, cannot bring it in. A couple other famed Westfield alumni. Andrew Lemberg, we mentioned earlier, plays at Pittsburgh. One of the leaders on that team. Injured this year. Was a world's ultimate back in 2014. And the women's division in college, Sadie Jazerski from Ohio State Fever. One of the captains there also played on the Junior Worlds team back in 2014. She's going to be a top Callahan. <coughs> she's going to excuse me. She's going to be a top Callahan nominee next year. Absolutely, she will be very much in the mix. And then of course Billy Sickles, whose younger brother Johnny Sickles is playing this one. Billy's one of the captains of Philadelphia Patrol, the club team playing in the Mid Atlantic region, a Nationals contender. Excuse me, Nationals fixture the last couple of years. They've been in the mix, making the pro flight just a year ago before driving back down to elite flight this past season. Resets here, Dan Friedman Brown getting it back, playing catch with Aylan Learned. Upfield to Learn. Learning and Camacho matching up. Friedman Brown now getting some other length to contend with here as he's got Lucas Adrians on him. They match each other size for size there. Columbia being pushed backwards here, no real upfield movement right now. Westfield doing a good job of shutting down the downfield cutters and poaching this lane. Keeping Columbia on the sidelines. Break around from Learned. Excuse me, to Learned. Patient offense from Columbia. Another break here looking to Binder. Columbia knows it needs this one. Nice patient offense from Columbia here. Westfield getting broken continually here. They're going back and around. Inside shot. And Binder looking for the cone. Takes his eyes off the disc. Unable to reel it in. Second drop in the end zone for CHS. Chance to tie it. Denied once again. Westfield gets it back now. Eli Weaver in the middle of the field. Finds Jack Chaffee. Back to Weaver. Chipping away now. No downfield movement from Westfield. Taking a shot downfield. Looking for Adrians. Adrians goes up. Foul call between Harris and Adrians. It's a very interesting foul call right there, Chris. I don't know that Adrians was able to get that, but Harris definitely making some contact. Definitely. Two sorting it out. Contested foul will go back to Weaver. There was no downfield movement from Westfield there. Columbia doing a good job of shutting down the downfield movement for Westfield. And Westfield, uh, Eli Weaver getting stuck looking at field there a little too long. Back with the disc now. Tossed up. Knocked away. No chance for Westfield to even get on that. Nice box out defense from Binder there. And Learned coming over the top. Taking a shot now. Looking down to field for Spiegel. Spiegel going up. And we have a tie game now in the state finals. Universe point. Universe point. Double game point here. Tied at 12. Spiegel elevating to bring that one in. Columbia with a chance now to come all the way back and win it. They trailed 7-2 and then 9-6 and then 10-10 before it became 12-10. Scored two in a row. Columbia will not say die. Imagine, and these two teams are going to put on their power lines here. Their top seven, expect Chothy, Weaver, Perry, Sickles to be on the field for Westfield. And you can definitely expect Learned, Harris, and Friedman Brown, and Spiegel to be on the field here. Those are the ones that have been carrying the game so far for both Columbia and CHS. And this is the thrilling conclusion, not only that we deserve 
but also that's probably warranted. These two teams have been so evenly matched all year long. And this is the final and the conclusion that this New Jersey State Final absolutely deserves. Year three of holding it here at Drew University and these two teams are grinding it out, giving it their all here in the final moments. One and last point to settle it. And seniors Friedman Brown and Spiegel don't have a state title. And they, this really means a lot to them. Not part of that 2015 Columbia crew that have won. Eli Weaver, on the other hand, stepping on the field, looking to win his third. Excuse me, he's already had three. He's looking to win his fourth in five years. Weaver, a part of that first Westfield State Championship as an eighth grader back in 2014. Won in 2016 and 2017, looking for a three-peat here to make it four in total during his high school career. The poll is up now. Westfield receiving Eric Palio receiving the disc. The freshman, a lot of trust from Moline to put the freshman back in. Johnny Sickles, the disc in the middle of the field. Another zone look from Columbia as well. No time left on the clock. They can afford it. CHS crowd rooting on this defensive unit. Josh Camacho upfield to Dave Perry. Downfield to Eli Weaver, who reels it in along the sidelines. 20 yards out now. Timeout from Weaver. Oh. Uh, not a timeout if from Weaver. If Weaver called that timeout, it would have been a turnover. Weaver looked like he was trying to signal for a timeout, and that was maintaining that he never actually made the call. Freeman Brown and Weaver down there. Ryan Boleyn also on hand to discuss that one. Multiple Columbia players stopped on that play, thinking that Weaver put his disc of the hand to call a timeout. Charlo Cannon coming in to help sort this one out. Weaver pleading his case, Freeman Brown making his voice heard as well. <sighs> Wouldn't be a state final without some controversy. These two team, these two players know each other well. We'll be matching up. Excuse me, we'll be playing together again this upcoming summer as part of the Devil U20 team. Played at club sectionals last year together as part of Triple B. Barton bait ultimate Boltman actually and we have a turnover here that is gonna be a turnover called Eli Weaver calling a timeout in hard cap which results in a turnover for Westfield Columbia sideline very much pumped up after that one Alan learned getting ready to pick this one up Joff Jack Choffee on the mark Weaver matching up with Brown Westfield going straight up right now, switching into a backhand force. Intensity definitely there. Learning, having to punt downfield. No one really in sight. Adrian's going up easily, grabbing that one. Getting it into Sickles. Layout attempt from Taylor. Taylor unable to get home. Pick call downfield, I believe. Camacho and Binder matching up. Emotions are certainly rising in the final moments of this New Jersey High School State Championship. The mist is coming in. It's getting foggy. Both teams trying to come and take home a coveted state title. Sickles putting it up downfield. Weaver giving chase. Weaver going up and grabbing it. Not in the end zone, though. No. Injury call here. Lucas Adrian's down on the field. He oh. landed awkwardly after that one. Eli Weaver going up for a monster grab on the goal line. Atoning for that uh, for that uh, timeout call earlier. Making up for the turnover for sure. Has Westfield knocking on the door of a third straight state championship. Grayson Shavlin, the sophomore, checks in for Westfield here. Weaver calling out his end zone play. Camacho and Chaffee already in the end zone. Columbia matching up here. Finding Perry in the end zone, and it's bobbled and knocked away. Weaver with a quick little dish. Perry unable to bring it in on the layout. Columbia with the great, great end zone pressure right there. Really tight lockdown defense from Binder on Josh Camacho. And Columbia gets it back once again with a chance to win here. 
They have not tra they have not led in this game. They have trailed the whole way and now have a chance to win it all. Swing around here for Freeman Brown. Weaver on him. Upfield a binder now, another swing. Downfield a learned, learned, reeling it in. Giving chase to that one, almost got away from him there. Around now to Freeman Brown, and Freeman Brown unable to bring it in. Foul call on the mark though. Shovelin being called for the foul. The Westfield crowd unhappy with the call, but. It will go back. It's an uncontested call too. I believe so. It's an un I believe it's an uncontested call. Yeah, Shovelin, a sophomore, been playing for several years now, part of the Westfield Middle School program, working his way up. Knows the game well. Definitely going to make sure he makes the right call there. Weaver matching up with Freeman Brown in this handler space. Downfield shot from Learned, looking downfield for Harris. Harris bringing it in, and Columbia is your 2018 state champions. What a comeback. What a comeback. Trailing all game long. And what do we expect? Learn it to Harris on that. The best of friends. Those two finding each other once again for the connection. An unbelievable finish to an incredible state final. Columbia fans and players spilling out of the field right now. Westfield in stunned disbelief after the end of this one. And observer Charlie Cannon wanting, and he's preaching that these Columbia fans get off the field, but they're just coming out in waves. Columbia absolutely deserving of that victory. Never giving up in this one. An unbelievable finish here. 13 to 12 is your final score. The first lead of the game for CHS is on the final point. And these two teams hugging high it five out. it out. Hugging it out, really. They know each other well. The spirit is all there. Knowing each other well from playing together at the youth club level. They'll be playing together this weekend. Devils going to the New York warm-up. These two teams know each other really well, and what an incredible feeling for those Columbia seniors. Working hard all four years here, finally getting a state title for some of those seniors like you talked about, Freeman Brown, Spiegel, Devern, uh, Sheedy, Sheedy as well. Sheedy's first year on the varsity team. Your seniors for Columbia are Jacob Sheedy, as we just mentioned. Lorenzo Devern, Daniel Friedman Brown, Max Spiegel. You can't leave out. Oh, but well, that's we got all of them. Josh Heacock. You can't leave out Josh, Josh Heacock. Heacock. Josh Heacock. Attending Temple University next year in Philadelphia. Yes, you're excited about that one. Donovan, a just finishing up his freshman year at Temple. Unbelievable finish here at Drew University. That will be one to go down in the record books. That'll be one they talk about for a very long time in the state of New Jersey. Once again, your final 13 to 12, Columbia winning its first state title since 2015. The final connection, the best of friends, Aylin Learned, finding Ben Harris in the back corner of the end zone. That'll do it here from Ranger Field. I'm Chris McGlynn alongside Donald Hugel. Thank you everyone for tuning in and have a good one.